What if the strength of your handshake could reveal how well your brain's core networks are working and how you're really doing mentally and physically right now? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're exploring what your grip can tell you about your brain, your mood, and your long-term resilience. Drawing on new research and clear, practical ways you can measure and support this marker at home. I'm Alara Skye. Grip strength is more than a gym metric. It's a quick, non-invasive indicator tied to aging, resilience, neurological coordination, and risk of chronic disease and early mortality. Because it relies on integrated systems, nervous, muscular, metabolic, it often reflects how well you're functioning beneath the surface, not just how strong your forearms feel on a given day. The latest insight comes from a 2025 study using data from the Human Connectome Project for Early Psychosis, published in the American Journal of Psychiatry. Researchers compared 89 young adults who experienced early psychosis within the last five years to 51 healthy peers, ages 16 to 35. Everyone completed resting state fMRI scans and standardized assessments of grip strength, overall functioning, and psychological well-being. The analysis centered on the brain's default mode network, or DMN, the system most active when you're at rest and engaged in internal thought. Stronger grip strength tracked with stronger resting state connectivity between the DMN and three regions, the anterior cingulate cortex, the sensorimotor cortex, and the cerebellum. The same connectivity patterns also related to well-being and overall functioning, suggesting a shared circuit behind motor performance and mental state. In participants with early psychosis, both grip strength and those connectivity measures were lower, and the link between the two was especially pronounced. Clinicians point to this as a clue that early changes in motor performance may line up with broader disruptions in how your brain organizes itself. That opens a path for earlier detection and for targeting circuits tied to both movement and well-being. Grip strength, though, extends far beyond brain networks. Lower grip is consistently linked with frailty, difficulty with daily tasks, slower gait, higher fall risk, longer hospital stays, and lower odds of recovery after illness or surgery. It also relates to cardiovascular health, with weaker grip associated with higher risk of heart attack and stroke, even after controlling for age, sex, and body composition. Longevity data follow the same pattern. Weaker grip strength correlates with higher all-cause mortality across diverse populations. That doesn't mean grip causes outcomes. It means this simple test mirrors how well your systems, metabolic, immune, muscular, and nervous, are coordinating. Lower grip strength also shows up more often in clinical depression and in older adults with memory, attention, and executive function challenges. You can track this at home with a hand dynamometer, which reads the maximum force you can generate when you squeeze. Digital models make repetition and logging easy. Set the handle to fit your hand, bend your elbow to 90 degrees, squeeze with maximum effort, repeat three times, and average the results. It's designed to measure strength, not build it, giving you a reliable snapshot you can follow over time. Reference values help you understand your number. A 2018 study of 1,232 adults ages 18 to 85 reported norms by age, sex, and dominant hand. As examples for the dominant hand, men 18 to 24 averaged about 104 pounds, 50 to 54 averaged about 97, and 70 to 74 averaged about 77. Women 18 to 24 averaged about 62 pounds, 50 to 54 averaged about 62, and 70 to 74 averaged about 47. Your exact percentile depends on your age group and sex. If you want a straightforward practice that supports psychomotor coordination and neurological stability, daily dead hangs are a clear option from this research context. A dead hang is simply hanging from an overhead bar with your feet off the ground, letting your body weight create sustained tension through the hands, arms, shoulders, and core. It trains grip endurance and coordination while engaging continuous nervous system control. Starting is simple. Use a bar you can reach without jumping. 
Begin with 10 to 15 second holds. If full body weight is too much, lightly rest your toes on a stool for partial support and alternate between lifting and setting them down. Frequent shorter hangs across the day are effective. A practical target is accumulating about three total minutes per day in multiple sets. Progression is gradual. A realistic single set target is around 90 seconds for men and 60 seconds for women, but reaching that takes time. The goal is steady, repeatable practice, not straining through pain. Many people notice that as grip endurance improves, everyday tasks feel easier and control under fatigue improves as well. Benefits go beyond raw strength. Hanging helps stretch and decompress tight upper body areas that build up from sitting, especially the lats and chest, supporting posture and shoulder mobility over time. Some people find better shoulder movement and a sense of freer alignment after consistent practice. As you advance, gentle neck or spinal rotations and periodic shoulder contractions during the hang-add controlled variety. It's important to keep the study's limits in view. The 2025 findings showed strong correlations between grip strength, well-being, and connectivity within and beyond the DMN, especially in early psychosis, but they did not prove that improving grip strength will directly improve mental health. Even so, the mapping of shared circuits supports motor-based interventions as a reasonable strategy for promoting psychomotor integrity and overall function. Pulling this together gives you a practical way forward. Measure your grip with consistent technique, compare it to age and sex-specific norms, and track changes over time. Use dead hangs as a simple daily practice to build and maintain your grip while supporting coordinated control. If you're following mental well-being closely, recognize that grip strength can offer another window into your current state, alongside other measures you track. Here's your challenge. Within the next 24 hours, record three grip readings per hand with a dynamometer, average them, and note the date. Over the next two weeks, practice dead hangs daily, short sets totaling about three minutes, and repeat the same grip test at the end. Compare your numbers and reflect on how daily tasks and your steadiness under fatigue feel. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.